Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome to the 10th Tink Hinter Mega Series tutorial video. In the last video, we basically plotted up our matplotlib graph here, uh, but we need to make a few small changes to the graph just because I, I think it's a little messy at the moment. One, we want to make the graph a bit bigger, um, but also we want to, um, the, we kind of want this, I'd rather this be a line than scatter plot. Now you can leave it as a scatter plot like I was saying, um, I leave the scatter plot basically like this on, on my website. I kind of like it, um, but you need to have the graph pretty long to do that. Uh, otherwise, it gets messy. Uh, so this is pure tick data, right? So this shows every trade, whereas this, depending on the zoom, it shows a different uh, amount of data. Otherwise, it's you know basically average data. So uh, that's that. So let's go ahead and uh, get started in making this graph a little better. So. Uh, if you're not too familiar with matplotlib, I do have a massive series on matplotlib customization. Uh, so if you want to learn more about exactly what we're doing, I highly suggest you check that out. I'll explain a little bit as, as to what the code does. But if you want to know like exactly how all this stuff works, I highly suggest you check out that series. If I recall, I'll put a link to it in the description. Chances are I forget. So uh, remind me if you want to see it, I will put it in. So moving right along. Um, the first thing that we really need to change here is let's go to the very top and our figure size is a five by five. Uh, we can start by making that first of all more like a five by four, but I would say maybe a six by four. Um, so let's save and run that really quick and just see what we think. Cause that should change a bit of the size, right? So the graph, if the graph is a bit too big, the graph will um, kind of affect uh, the actual size of everything. So if you want, you can make that graph uh, fairly large. Now, I'm trying to think of where the best place for us to, because we can, you can define like the size of your actual um, application. Um, really down here, I think you just do geometry or something like that equals. Uh, but I think our graph really can specify that. And so let's do, uh, let's do for now, um, 10 by 6. Let's see if we get away with a decent chart for now. We'll, we'll actually, we will change that eventually uh, to something better. Uh, we'll make the actual application the size, not the chart. And the chart will, will size to the application. That way, if you go to a different page uh, and there's no graph on that page, the application doesn't like shrink on you. That looks kind of bad. So anyways, uh, that's, that's a little bit better of a size, I would say. So cool. So uh, back to home and now we disagree. <laughs> and then the application exits. So, uh, okay. So now what do we want to do uh, about our graph? So we're going to come up. Uh, first of all, we are style using, so that's good. Um, and now our graph, what we're going to go ahead and do is we want to add, first of all, uh, some, no some notation. But also, um, let's do, okay, so we've got buys price. Uh, then we can we can specify a color here. Now you can do something as simple as let's say buys we would call green. Okay, we'll just leave that for now. And then we'll also add a label, and we'll call that buys. And then we'll come down here and do the exact same thing, only uh, cells and whoops that needs to be red. <laughs> okay, so we've got plot plot. Uh, also, we can go ahead and we can add a title, let's say, to our graph. We can say the title is uh, BTCE prices, Bitcoin, actually, BTC, BTC USD prices, something like that. Um, and then we can say a.set underscore title, the title. And now let's look at our graph at this point. agree and you can see that we've now switched to lines and uh, you've got uh, the more um, uh, we've got green and red to denote and we've got prices cool now the other thing that we kind of need is uh, a label here uh, a legend rather so we might close that close here and we would want to add a legend. So basically after the plotting with labels, we would add something like this, a.legend. Um, we're going to use a bbox underscore two underscore anchor. Um, and, and actually here, here's what I'll do for you guys. Uh, what I think we should get away with this. 
A dot legend. Let's try that for now. Just to show you the most basic legend. Okay, so there's a, a little legend here. The, the problem with this legend, for the most part, is the following. Um, it can cover over data. Now, we've got this chart massively updating, I think, every two seconds or something. But uh, it can cover over that data, and that's kind of annoying. So what you can do instead is use some fancy code. Now, this is the code I'm not going to explain. If you want to know more about it, uh, check out the series I have. Um, so instead, we'll do this, bbox to anchor. Um, and then we're going to say that. And then the location's basically 0. Um, one point we'll do zero two one and then uh, point one zero two then we're gonna say the location is the third possible location then we're going to say uh, end call equals two and then finally the border axes pad is zero that should work. Let's try that and see what we get. If we get some nastiness or some positiveness. Awesome. So now we've got buys and sells at the upper left-hand corner. So now they literally cannot get in the way. So that's cool. Uh, so the other thing that I, I always think is kind of cool, um, I don't have it yet. I, I wouldn't mind having it, though, is like whenever they display the, the most recent price like over on the edge of the graph. I, I just eat that right up. I think that's cute. Um, so I wouldn't mind something like that. Um, so you could do something, uh, but uh, we're not going to do that right here. But what we can do is see you've got BDC, BDC US, uh, the prices. What you can do is you could do something like this. You could say uh, that's what the title equals, and then we could say um, let's add a new line, and then last price colon. And then we'll do space plus the string version of data price. So that's data. It's referencing um, the full pandas data frame, not just buys, not just sells. Um, data price. And then we would just want the lasteth element. Now, since we're referencing 2000, that would mean the last element would either be negative 1 or 1999. Now let's try negative one first, though, and make sh let's see if we get away with that. We did not. Right, key error uh, because of it, it's actually a data frame. So let's let's do this instead. 1999. Okay, so now we get even better. Last price, and then maybe while I'm yip yapping, that will get an update. We'll see. Um, but anyway, that's uh, just some, some general customization that we can do. Um, I am not a fan of the whole green and red, so I'm gonna also go ahead and change those colors into, this is a sea of BTC client, and I prefer these colors, this blue and this blue. Um, so I'm going to change them. Feel free to change them to whatever color you want. Uh, it does not matter. But instead of just simple character letters uh, to define colors, we can do hex colors like so. And for one version of a pretty blue, 00A3E0. And another pretty color would be a number uh, or pound sign 183A54. Save and run that really quick. And we have um, a slightly better looking colors at least in my opinion. Now again, you might want to keep the scatter plot idea. You might want to do the lines. I like the lines because they're just a little slightly more coherent uh, when you're looking at a graph like this one where there's a lot, there's 2000 uh, data points here. So it's a little hard for your eyes to know like the proper order. When you turn them into lines, it's very easy, I think, to see. So anyway, I think price just changed. I'm not positive. My eyes might be playing tricks on me. <laughs> so anyways, um, so that's it for this one. Um, we've got a, a decent live graph. So now some of the new things that we want uh, or some of the things that we need to do, in, at least in the future, is we want to be able to... Live graphs are great. Um, 2,000 data points, cool. But this is you know the last 30 minutes, basically, of prices. And 2,000 is the max that they'll give you. So if there's, like say, high volatility at the moment, um, this is 30 minutes, but you might only get uh, five minutes if it's really volatile and there's a lot of volume in the market. So 
so right now it's okay, but in many times it won't be okay. So what we want to do is have longer data frame or data sets or time frames. There we go. That's the right word. Uh, we want longer time frames, and so there's all kinds of places where you can pull uh, historical data. Um, but we're going to use uh, C of BTC. I have a lot of historical data there. Uh, we actually have data all the way down to tick, all through, well, not all through history since we started, so really about four or five months, maybe six months worth, I can't remember. Um, we've got tick data, depth data, basically everything you could possibly want. So we're going to use the C of BTC server. Uh, you do not need an account or anything like that. Uh, there may come a time when I, the, right now the data that we will use is actual real-time data. Might come a time where I kind of delay that data or at least uh, slow it down from updating just because the processing requirements are pretty high. Um, so yeah, keep that in mind. This might not be the perfect data. Um, I'll try to add an annotation if I ever change it, but for now the data is actually good data. It's live from all of the servers, so yeah, keep that in mind. So anyways, uh, that's it for this one. If you guys have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support subscriptions. Till next time.